I graduated from a coding boot camp almost three years ago. And before I say anything else, let me say, going to a coding boot camp changed my life. I wouldn't be where I am today, making a living from data science and engineering at a big tech company, working remotely and traveling around the country without it. But I do have a few things that I regret. And if I could go back in time, there were a couple things that I would do differently that would have sped up my journey to getting hired, stopped me from burning out and saved me tons of time, money and effort along the way. Coding boot camps promise a fast track to tech jobs like software engineer, data analyst, or web developer. And the companies who run these coding boot camps often highlight success stories of graduates landing their dream job in their advertisements. Well, hi, my name's Jack and I'm one of those success stories. I dropped out of college to join a coding boot camp and landed a full-time job in tech less than a year after graduating. When I would have been in college for two more years, finishing up my degree instead of earning a full-time salary and gaining industry experience. A lot of people hear my story and think all they have to do to land a six-figure job in tech is sign up to a boot camp, graduate, and the offer letters start flowing in. This might be true for some people, but it definitely wasn't for me. There are a lot of things outside of just graduating that you have to learn to land a high paying job in tech as a coding bootcamp graduate. And that's what I want to dive into today. I'm going to share the real behind the scenes, the strategies I wish I would have implemented in coding bootcamp from day one. So whether you're thinking about signing up to a bootcamp, currently enrolled, or have graduated and are wondering what to do next, this video is going to give you all of the things I regret not doing when I was in a coding bootcamp that will hopefully save you time, money, and countless rejection letters. My first regret was not starting my job search immediately. I was given this advice on my first day of coding bootcamp and I never realized how important it was until I graduated and was looking for jobs. Learning how to code and landing a job in tech are completely different skills. I didn't realize this until I graduated and was looking for jobs, but learning to code is only a tiny part of actually securing a position at a company. To land a job in tech as a coding bootcamp grad, you'll have to learn how to create a resume that stands out and passes automated resume checkers, craft an elevator pitch for phone screen interviews so you can explain what you do and why the company should hire you, learn how to sort through thousands of crappy job postings. Learn how to deal with the constant sting of ghosting and rejection. Learn how to network, build a community, and reach out to recruiters and hiring managers. If getting a job at Google were as simple as passing some lead code questions, everybody would already work at Google. There are a lot of really smart engineers who can code like crazy but are missing a piece of the puzzle, whether that's social skills, a bad resume, or one of the things I mentioned a second ago. Most people ruin their chances of getting a job before a person even sees their resume. If you're learning how to code or currently enrolled in a coding bootcamp, here's my advice. One. Iterate on your resume often and get feedback from professionals. Most coding boot camps have a dedicated career service team and you should absolutely be using them to help you make your resume better. As a coding boot camp graduate, you're probably not going to have a lot of real world project experience. So you need to put extra effort into how you market yourself. If you think you're getting auto rejections on your resume, run it through an ATS checker to make sure your resume is actually gonna get seen by a real person. There's a resume scanner that I use on jobscan.co for every single job that I apply to that helps you optimize your resume keywords for each job description so that you're application actually gets seen by recruiters and not sent to the bottom of the pile. Number two, start applying to jobs before you graduate just to learn the system of applying. It takes a while for the algorithm on job sites like LinkedIn to actually start showing you jobs that align with your skills. But if you keep saving and applying to job postings while you're in coding bootcamp, by the time you graduate, the algorithms will recommend you a bunch of roles that match you with employers who are looking for the skills that you have. And as a coding bootcamp graduate without a ton of experience, finding a job that aligns with your skills is very important. Three, write a kick-ass elevator pitch to sell your experience based on the job posting. Your first interview with a company will likely just be a phone screening and they'll ask you a couple questions about yourself and what your experience is and why you're the best person for the job. And this is the easiest interview of all time if you're able to clearly articulate who you are, what you do, and why you're the best for the job. I literally have a 45 second script that I use and read verbatim when I'm on phone screen interviews. I've done this a bunch of times, nobody has ever noticed, and I've gotten passed on to the technical challenge from basically every phone screen that I've done. I've even bombed every follow-up technical question on a phone screen, but because I made my value to the company so clear in the elevator pitch, they ended up passing me on to the technical anyway, just to see how I would perform in the coding challenge. A lot of the time with phone screen interviews, they're kind of just making sure you're not weird and can actually talk about the things that you do. Don't leave it up to your brain on interview day to properly market yourself. Make an elevator pitch that sells your experience for the job you're interviewing for and write it down. The second thing I regret not doing when I was in a coding bootcamp is focusing on the fundamentals. In any bootcamp, especially in tech, there's a huge temptation to sprint ahead. I get it. You're learning cool stuff. You're moving super fast through the curriculum. And you would have jumped straight into the deep end with building machine learning models, advanced algorithms, and complex cloud apps. But just like building a house, you need a proper foundation before you can build anything cool. And in coding, as boring as it sounds, that foundation is a deep understanding of the basics. Data structures, algorithms, basic logic, and even understanding how computers work on a lower level. It's not the glamorous part of tech, but it's what's gonna make you a resilient, adaptable developer who won't shit the bed and break prod once they finally get hired. To become great at anything, you need to 
master the fundamentals. And you'll have a much easier first few years on the job if you're able to build from first principles instead of moving fast and breaking things. Or in this case, moving fast and making tech debt. Plus, coding boot camps kind of teach you to be hacky. But when you're building enterprise applications, you need to know about optimization, efficiency, testing, security, and a bunch of other boring stuff that you don't spend much time on when you're building projects at a coding boot camp. This is stuff you need to self-study or even consider getting additional certificates in to prove to employers that it's stuff that you know and care about. And not to mention, focusing on the fundamentals will help you so much with your interviews. Because half the time, companies just use lead code questions that are just basic data structure and algorithm questions, which is something you'll quickly pick up by studying the fundamentals. AlgoExpert.io is how I learned a lot of these fundamentals, and it's basically like lead code, but it actually gives you a breakdown of the concept behind the question. So check that out if coding interviews are something you're actively trying to learn. And the third thing I regret was waiting until graduation to learn how to pass coding interviews. If you leave this video with one single piece of advice, let it be this. Learn to pass coding interviews before you land a coding interview that you actually want to pass. Sounds like obvious advice, but so many bootcamp grads have made the mistake of not learning how to confidently approach technical interviews before they have a real one that they actually care about. And just like anything else, you learn the fastest by trying and failing over and over again. So take as many interviews as you can just for the sake of experience. And you'll start to see that a lot of these interviews follow the same patterns and sometimes they'll even ask you the same questions. And not to mention that coding in front of someone you want to impress is way different than when you're alone sitting at your desk fully caffeinated with lo-fi music playing in the background. It's stressful, but the more you do it, the less scary it gets. Here are a couple things you can do to get your interview skills up quickly. Number one, I hate to say it, lead code. It's the most boring answer, but without knowing how to solve these types of questions, there's a whole section of jobs that you're never going to be able to land, even if you're an absolute 10x developer on the actual job. So solve a few of these problems every day and try and work your way up to being able to solve medium difficulty problems pretty quickly. Again, Algo Expert is really nice if you want to learn the concepts behind these types of questions. And even if you're not a software engineer, this still applies to you. I'm a data engineer and my interview process had zero of these lead code style technical questions, but it had tons of SQL challenges and a data science take home project. SQL Zoo.com is how I studied for the SQL challenges, and Kaggle.com is a great place to practice for data roles. Number two, do practice or mock interviews as much as humanly possible. If you have an idea of the question that's going to be asked by an interviewer, get a friend or instructor to ask you those same questions so you can get a feel for explaining the work that you're doing. Remember, coding in front of people is the only way to get over the fear of coding in front of people. And Pramp.com is absolutely amazing for this. You can match with another real student who's practicing for coding interviews, take turns mock interviewing each other in the same software that you would use in an actual technical interview. If you have a fear of technical interviews or coding in front of other people, this website will be your best friend. Match with people who are also interviewing, learn from them, and you'll be crushing technical interviews in no time. Number three, take interviews even if you know you're going to bomb. I know nobody likes to feel like a deer in headlights when they get asked a question in an interview that they have no idea how to answer, but I've never regretted taking an interview even in ones where I've fully embarrassed myself, and there have been a couple, because the experience I get from the past interview almost always helps me in the next interview. Interviewing is a skill in itself. If you only ever do it a handful of times, you never really master the skill. And when your dream job rolls around, you're going to want as much practice and familiarity with this process as humanly possible. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like. And if you're a coding bootcamp graduate yourself, drop a comment of what you regret not doing back when you were in coding bootcamp. And if you want to know how I really feel about the coding bootcamp that I went to, check out this video here. Safe travels, and I'll see you in the next one.